Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at binary phase diagrams and specifically how we apply what's known as the lever rule to those diagrams. So first off, a phase diagram is intended to answer two questions. The first of which is, given the temperature and composition of our material, how much of what phases are present? The second question they answer is, what is the composition of any present phases? So let's start off just by sketching a phase diagram. Now the y-axis on the phase diagram is typically just the temperature, meaning what temperature is our overall material at? The x-axis is the composition. Now, since this is a binary phase diagram, meaning there are two materials, uh, we only need one number in order to indicate the overall composition. And typically that number is the percentage of one of the two materials. And if we call those materials material A and material B, we can just say that this is the percentage of B. And if we do it that way, that means that the left-hand side is going to be 100% A, while the right-hand side is 100% B, which feels pretty natural. Now, these binary phase diagrams can get very complex, but we're gonna keep things simple for this video. We're going to look at a pair of materials which form what's called a complete solid solution. And really what this means is if we're looking at a solid with these two materials, then the material has a single crystal phase no matter what that composition is. And so if you're looking at the individual atoms, essentially we can just replace any number of A atoms with B atoms and it will keep the same crystal structure no matter what we do. Now, if we heat this up hot enough, uh, the vast majority of materials that we're interested in will melt. And so if we get hot enough, then we're gonna end up with a pure liquid. So what's interesting is, A typically will melt at a different temperature than B and as we add more B, we expect that the melting temperature, where we get that pure liquid, increases. And we call this line the liquidus line, just meaning that above that line, uh, we are purely liquid. Now, the solidus line is actually not the exact same as the liquidus line. And below the solidus line, we are a pure solid. But in between these two lines, we actually have a mixture of phases. So we're gonna have both liquid and alpha phase in between there. Now, if you have a pure material, like pure A, pure B, you notice that the liquidus and solidus lines meet. And really what that means is that you have to melt all of B before you can increase the temperature anymore, right? But if you have a mixture of materials, right? If we have A and B together, well, we're gonna have a gradual melting of the two materials. That's what ends up happening. So let's answer these two questions for the easy cases. And the easy cases are anytime that we have a pure liquid, so maybe this point right here, anytime we have a pure solid. We have a temperature defined and a composition defined. So how much of what phases are present here? Well, we are 100% liquid. What is the composition of that phase? Well, the composition of that phase is basically the same as the overall composition. So we can just look down at the overall composition down here. We see that this is mm, roughly 40% B. And this, that means that we have 60% A and 40% B in this liquid. Over here, it's easy to see that this is pure alpha. And again, 
the composition of that phase, that alpha phase, is going to be the same as the overall composition, meaning that this is roughly 10% A and 90% B. Now the fun part comes whenever we're looking at the region where we have both liquid and alpha phases. And here we're going to start off by finding the answer to question two, because that's actually the easier in this case. We're going to develop what's called a tie line where we just sketch a line that is perfectly horizontal. We're doing that because both phases, right? We know that there's liquid and alpha. Both of these phases need to be at the same temperature. And the reason for that is because we have this equilibrium assumption. And the only way that works is if everything is the same temperature. And in order to figure out the composition of the liquid phase, we'd look at where this tie line intersects the liquidus line. And likewise, we do the same for the solidus line. So this composition of the overall liquid and alpha is going to be 70% A and 30% B. The liquid that makes up that overall phase is going to be 85% A and 15% B. And the solid is going to be roughly 40% A and 60% B. So how do we answer number two in these more complicated questions? Well, we're going to use the tie line. Now to figure out how much of those phases are present, we're going to use the lever rule. But before we get there, let's go ahead and look at the base principles that we'll use in order to come up with this lever rule. The two equations we need are very simple. First off, the total of all of the added compositions has to equal one. Why? Because if we add all the pieces of our thing together, we'll get all of the thing, right? So this is 100%. The other thing that we'll use is that the overall composition is going to be equal to the percentage of liquid present multiplied by the composition of the liquid plus the percentage of alpha present multiplied by the composition of alpha. Now we can do just a little bit of work over here to solve for the percentage of liquid present. That's just going to be 1 minus x alpha. Then if we plug that into the other equation, we get that our overall composition is equal to 1 minus x alpha times Cl plus the percentage of alpha times the composition of alpha. And we'll do just a few more arithmetic steps and end up with the percentage of alpha present. Okay, using the equation over here, we can come up with the percentage of liquid present. And I'm going to skip that work. And we can just say that x sub l is equal to c sub alpha minus c over c alpha minus c l. All right, we can plug these numbers in. But there's one more step that we can take to make the implementation of this just a little bit easier. Let's take a look at this piece right here. This is C of alpha minus the overall composition. So if we kind of think of this as a distance between these two points, we can just give that another variable name. And we're going to give that name Q. For this one, that's the distance between these two points. And so this is going to be P. So this is P, this is Q. And if we look at the denominator, that's the total distance across this entire line. So for both of these, this is P plus Q. So looking back at our problem here, our P value, which is the overall composition minus CL, so that is this distance here, and we can use either A or B for this. You get the same answer both ways, right? So this is 15 minus 30, or you can use 85 minus 70. In both cases, you get 15%. Q is going to be uh, 30%, right? 40 minus 70 or 60 minus 30. So this is C alpha minus C, which is 30%, which makes P plus Q 45%. So that means that 
x sub l is going to be equal to 30 divided by 45, which is two thirds, so 66.7%. And our x alpha is going to be 15 over 45, or one third, which is 33.3%. And that is what question one was asking. How much of which phases are present? And this says that the phases present are liquid and alpha. It's two thirds liquid, one third alpha. And so we're done. So to sum up, if we want to know what phases are present, we can read that pretty easily off of the binary phase diagram. In order to figure out the composition of what phases are present, we just use the tie line, right? We just draw a straight line uh, through the liquidus and solidus lines. But in order to figure out how much of those phases are present, we have to use this lever rule. And the lever rule, if we define these distances P and Q, it's just going to be Q divided by P plus Q to get the left-hand side. And for the right-hand side, which in this case is alpha, we end up with P divided by P plus Q. And then check here, just in case you forget uh, where exactly all the P's and Q's go, is that if we end up closer to the liquidus line, we should have more liquid. And if we end up closer to the alpha line, then we should have more alpha. <clears throat> if you just do that quick check, then you shouldn't mess up the final answer. So that should be all you need to know on how to use the lever rule. And I hope you found this helpful.